uh, let me make what I think is, for me, the most profound working hypothesis. Mm -hmm. To me, we are all spirits having a physical experience as we ride the river of life together. Our spiritual parents dress us in these bio-body suits, put us in this playpen that we call the universe in order to grow in coherence, in order to develop our gifts of intentionality, and in order to become what we were intended to become, which is co-creators with our spiritual parents. Mm. I could say a little that's bit. That's beautifully but said, yes. That, that's the poet part of me. Yeah. The, but, but if you look, at, let's just talk a bit about the first statement of coherence. If we look at a normal light bulb, all right, let's say a 60-watt light bulb, it gives some light, but not a lot of light. And the reason it doesn't give a lot of light is because the photons coming out of the light bulb interfere with each other. They destructively interfere with each other. And so only a little bit of light comes out. Now, if we could use our consciousness, develop the ability within ourselves to use our consciousness to have each photon comes out, coming out riding on each other's back, being in phase with each other, then the energy density coming out of that flux of photons would be something like 10 to 100 times the surface of the sun. Mm. So the point is, that is the potential mm. of a single light bulb. We now see that light-emitting diodes are coherent when they're pushed far enough in voltage beyond the normal LED uh, domain, and they're being used in the taillights of cars multiple LEDs, and they will be used more and more. So that, that of course, is the laser. That's, that's the manifestation. And so the, I draw from that it, the analogy that we humans have these latent capabilities. We're just, we're not very coherent. So we need to become more coherent by working on ourselves. We have the infrastructure to do it. We just need the discipline to do it. That's, uh, there's that one. Now let me go to a second yeah. piece of information that's important for people, to, your audience, to understand. Mm -hmm. it, and it's a simple kind of um, comparison. One can, we know what is the radius of our observable cosmos. It's about 15 billion light years. And Astronomers can tell us what is the average electromagnetic mass density from in that. And if we multiply the two together, we can, we can put down a number for how much energy of the electromagnetic kind is existing in our observable cosmos. All right, so let's hold that in our right, right hand. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, let's take the vacuum. Really good physicists like John Wheeler, David Bohm, and a few others, a long time ago, calculated that for quantum mechanics and relativity to be internally self-consistent, then the energy density, latent energy density stored in the physical vacuum is a huge number. All right? Um, mm -hmm. We have the number, but let's not confuse the issue by writing it down. But let me put it in a simple term. If I take a single hydrogen atom, which is mostly empty space, just a proton and an electron, it's mostly empty space. I take that volume, it's a very, very small number, but I multiply it by the predicted energy density of the physical vacuum. And then I have another number which I hold in my, hold in my left hand. Mm -hmm. That number in my left hand is a trillion times the number in my right hand. Mm. And so what that means is that all the energy of our electromagnetic universe in all the stars and all the planets and all the cosmic dust is hardly a whisper of a fragrance of what's latently present in the physical vacuum. Now, nature does not make mistakes, big mistakes, and therefore we can see that understanding the physical vacuum will be our future. Mm -hmm. And as we understand that, we will understand ourselves because we are made of all of that stuff. 
Mm. And we will really, we will really move down the road of developing ourselves rung by rung on the ladder of understanding. It isn't going to be quick, and most of the development is going to be outside of space-time, mm-hmm. which presently is invisible to us. So we will manifest as we evolve the cognitive powers of presently invisible invis- stuff, and that will be part of our transformation into the next epoch of, phys- of reality. Mm. I, exciting, exciting to live it, this it, time. It is exciting. It really is. And I would love it if my Orthodox Science colleagues could open their minds a little bit to look at the experimental data. Mm. Well, it will thank be a you profound for... adventure for them. Yeah, and you, you have done research and more and more is coming out. So yes. Um, yes. that's the intention. That's the intention, exactly, to leave a very good record for orthodox scientists to eventually look at um, when they are willing to get out of the box. Mm. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Bill Bill Tiller, for for all this very, very uh, abundant and juicy, as I like to call it, uh, information. You are very welcome, Lilu. (laughs) It's been a pleasure to talk with you. Thank you. Thank you.